Hello friends, my name is Chris Votek. I'm a cellist and composer. Thank you so much, Sci Arts and Rangini, for having me. Uh, it's really nice to have this little opportunity to share. Uh, so I do a few different things. Most of them have to do with music. Uh, but today I'm mostly going to play Hindustani classical music on cello. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about how it relates to and can intersect with other living music cultures. And that includes Western classical music. The first piece was a bandish set in an afternoon rag called Bimpalasi. And I have immense, immense gratitude for my wonderful accompanist, tabo maestro Milamjit Dilan. He is my dear friend and collaborator, and I appreciate his amazing musicianship. Thank you, Neil. So I play vocal style Hindustani music, or gayaki, on the cello. So what do I mean by gayaki? Let me show you. That last bandish, I'm just gonna play the first line. Here it is on show. So this is a song with words, and it could be sung. Now you have to forgive my bad singing and my bad pronunciation. I'm just doing this to illustrate. So. So this is in contrast to instrumental style. With instrumental style, the use of the bow is quite different. So I'm going to play an instrumental style piece next to show this difference. Uh, because with instrumental style, I'm trying to imitate the sound of the sarod or the sitar very plucked short sounds, so there's a lot of back and forth with the bow, uh, which is very different than vocal sound, which with a bow you try to make it as sustained and connected as possible. So I hope you enjoy this next piece. It's a sargam in rag kafi. <laughs> Thank you. 
So let me take a minute to tell my story of finding this music as a Californian. Cello is an instrument not often found in Indian music. Usually you see it in the Western Symphony Orchestra. But playing any instrument is about listening and then imitating the sound you hear. Any instrument or any voice can do this. It does not matter what color your skin is or where you were born. I met my first teacher, Jagan Ramamurthy, 13 years ago, and I knew almost immediately that I wanted to sound like him. His violin sound was just so fluid and mesmerizing, I had never heard anything like it. So I sat with him, taking lessons, imitating each phrase he would play on the violin. After seven years of lessons, he said that I was ready to go learn from his teacher, Dr. N. Rajamji. So at that point, I went to India to learn from her, and I've been studying with her continuously ever since, about five years. I actually just had a Skype lesson with her about an hour ago, and I'm going to play you what she taught me in this lesson, because it's fresh in my mind, and I want to give you a little window into the learning process. So you must forgive my mistakes. Uh, this is uh, something I have not yet perfected. Uh, the rog is Darbari Kannada. It is a grave rog played deep in the night. Before I dive in, I'm going to illustrate the difference between the techniques, the techniques used in Western style cello playing and Hindustani style cello playing, using the scale of this Darbari Kannada as an example. So first I'm going to play the same notes, the same ascending and descending pattern of pitches, but with the usual, um, usual way that a Western cello player creates sound, which is by using vibrato. Which is a oscillation of the hand that makes this continuous wah-wah sound. That's what the basic Western cello sound is like, which is great for projecting the sound out into a big concert hall. So now I'm going to play the up and down of Dabari Canada, and you'll hear some different techniques, mainly mind, which is sliding between the notes, and andolan which is a very slow oscillation. It's similar to vibrato, but it's much slower, and the distance the pitch moves is a larger distance. It's wider. So here is the up and down of Darbari.
So I'm going to play a slow, slow bandish, preceded by an lap. Uh, but it's so slow, it's in a uh, theka called Velambit Ektal, which is 12 beats, but it takes almost a whole minute to get through those 12 beats. And you'll hear the mukra, which is a small bit of the composition repeated many times, and that just marks the sum, it shows the downbeat. Sa re sa ni sa ni sa re ga ga ma re sa So I hope you enjoy that body kind.
So I love playing music from different cultures. And this next piece is going to be completely different. It's going to be from the Western classical tradition. It's a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's called the Courant from the second cello suite in D minor. Uh, so I'm just going to play a couple lines and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how, at least in my mind, I relate this to Hindustani classical music. So in Bach, the idea of a note is a dot. Ba, 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 ba. Sa, sa, ba, ga, ba, sa. Whereas in Hindustani music, each note is sort of a wave, not a little, not a speck, not an individual sp spot. In Bach, you make shape or you make waves out of the dots, out of collections of dots. And in raga music, the, the building block that is a note can be a wave and a shape. And the bigger chunks can be a wave or a shape. So that is just, just an observation. And I think it maybe is interesting to hear them back and forth a little bit. So like this collection of notes is here and the second measure of this piece. And if I were to play that with more of a Darbari Hindustani ornamentation, it might sound like... faster, kind of like a ton. So the lines can be blurred a little bit in this kind of example, but I think it's interesting. But the next piece I will play will be purely a Western interpretation of the Courant by Bach. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So I'd like to share a little bit about an exciting project I got to work on recently that actually deals with this intersection between Indian classical music and Western classical music. My dear friend Neelamjeet Dillon asked me to team up with him to arrange the music for a collaboration between Ustad Zakir Hussain, Kala Ramnath, and San Francisco Symphony. So this was a true honor Zakirji and Kalaji are two of my heroes. And the music is amazing. One piece is in Darbari, Canada. One piece is a medley of Rajasthani folk songs. One piece is entirely based on solo tabla language. But there is an interesting challenge here. You have Western musicians whose way of learning is almost entirely to read notated music. And you have Indian musicians whose way of learning is almost entirely by ear. How do they play together and communicate? Uh, so Neelamjit and I got to play a role being the musical translators. We arranged and wrote down the music for the Westerners to read, and we recorded mock-up audio tracks for everyone to listen to in advance of the rehearsals and recording. So I'm going to give a little sneak peek into what these pieces are like, playing along with some of the audio mock-ups we made. So enjoy these two short excerpts.
to the end here. I want to thank again SciArts R Us for having me, and big thanks to Ranjini for organizing all of this. Stay tuned for the other concerts. Uh, if you're interested in staying in touch with Neelamjeet and I, please follow us on social media. We have a lot of releases coming up, so you can find me on Instagram at Chris Votek. C-H-R-I-S-V-O-T-E-K. And you can find Neil at at Neelamjit Music. That's at N-E-E-L-A-M-J-I-T-M-U-S-I-C. Neelamjit Music. Now the last piece I'm going to play is another Rajasthani folk song. This one is in Mishramand. Uh, my teacher, Jagannarma Murthy, learned it from M.S. Gopalakrishnan. Uh, so thanks again for listening. And again, please try to find me on social media to stay in touch. Uh, or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, send me your email address and I can put you on my email list. And I can send you announcements about uh, releases coming up. Don't worry, I don't send too many emails. Uh, so thank you again for tuning in. Thank you to my teachers for sharing their knowledge with me. Thanks to Neelamjit for being such a wonderful person to work with. And thank you again, Ranjini. And especially thanks to you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 